now we continue our Transworld Sport Classic series, in which we look back on some of our most memorable features from the past quarter of a century. This week, the profile that we first brought to our viewers nine years ago. In August of 2003, all eyes were on Paris as the Athletics World Championships came to the City of Light. Transworld Sport joined the masses who flocked to the French capital, but rather than head straight to the Stade de France, we followed the sounds of a party taking place on the banks of the River Seine. It was there that we found the young man we were looking for, a Jamaican sprinter by the name of Usain St. Leo Bolt. As luck would have it, we caught up with Usain on his 17th birthday. At this point in his career, Usain was already getting used to taking centre stage. The teenagers' times over 200 and 400 metres before arriving in Paris meant that there were many people eagerly anticipating their first chance to see him run. However, the Jamaicans were taking no chances with their young star, as their then Athletics Association president explained to us. He is one of those beautiful young men that is so talented. It's unbelievable. Now, uh, in a crowd, he's so modest and humble. He doesn't stand out like some of these pretenders. And that makes me really warm to him. And, you know, the kind of talent that he has, we really have to nurse him. I have a phrase I say, if a man run fast every day, one day his foot going to break off. If Bolt does not even run, the atmosphere of a world championship is what we want for a youngster like this. Because we are expecting wonders at the Olympics next year. That's the big one. Those hoping to see the lightning bolt strike in Paris were disappointed as his team decided that the time was not quite right. Nevertheless, we'd seen enough to know a trip to the Caribbean would prove well worthwhile. Hey, Chancellor Sport, you made it. Welcome to Jamaica. One month on, in September 2003, and we were travelling along the coast from Montego Bay to Trelawney, a Jamaican parish that had a reputation on the island for producing fast runners. Some said there was something special about the local honey that packed them full of energy. Whatever the reason, Usain Bolt was one of the most talented sprinters to have emerged from Trelawney in a long time. In 2002, then aged 15, and in front of adoring home fans in Kingston, Bolt became the youngest ever junior world champion when he won the 200 metres. His performances at the junior level had made him Jamaica's most exciting and popular athletics prospect. I really am proud of myself too for doing so well and making Jamaica proud. And I know Jamaica fans will always be behind me 100%. So I just like thank them for everything they have done for me, from World Juniors they have been keeping and been pushing me onwards. At this time, Bolt had recently graduated from his local high school, which meant an end to his relationship with Dwight Barnett, the school's sports teacher who, as Usain's coach, had helped him begin realising his potential. Given Bolt's age, Barnett had decided to limit his weight training to ensure his muscle development remained in harmony with his growing body. The flexibility work they concentrated on helped Usain make the most of one of his natural attributes, his height. My 200 style, and really I just sprint out to run the corners fast. That's the main thing in a 200 meter. But when I come off, I always try to get tall. When you get tall, when I get tall, I seem to go a little bit faster. Back then, some wondered if Usain's height, he was six foot four by the stage, might actually start to work against him, especially over 200 meters. But that wasn't a concern that Barnett shared. People saying that you're saying will be going tall, I don't think so. Um, people who are 6'9 tend to have a problem with the starting position in that um, they will get up too early. As a sprinter, you're saying it's just the right height, and I think that he'll be doing well for the future. Said, go. Yeah. 
In 2003, Bolt was seen more as a 200 and 400 meter runner rather than a 100 and 200 sprinter. He was already being compared to one of his heroes, Michael Johnson, and the Jamaican teenager was flattered by the comparison. He's always relaxed, no matter what kind of pressure he's under. He always stays relaxed. Don't try to really do over anything different from his normal running plan. I just always watch that and I try to keep relaxed, just like him. With his incredible potential, the interest in a young Usain Bolt was growing at a real pace. While we were with him on the island, he filmed his scenes as the star in a Puma commercial. That's on action. You're going to look back. You keep your head forward. <laughs> Those around Usain were aware that if he continued to progress on the track, then he could expect more of these sort of engagement. But as Dwight Bunnett told us, running would always be Bolt's top priority. Okay. <laughs> he has to keep focused. That's one of the ma major things in terms of track and field. Um, people tend to drift. Um, once you're in it and you love it, I think you, you have to keep focus. Training is very important. A lot of people tend to drift away from training, but I want to tell you seeing that um, you will have to continue training and training very hard. Despite scholarship offers from U.S. colleges, it was felt that staying in Jamaica would suit Bolt better. By this time, he'd already turned professional, and among those helping to guide him was Norman Pert. Pert would go on to relocate to Kingston with Bolt, where he would have access to the best training facilities on the island. I need to ensure that um, be as his mentor, as a person who's in charge of him personally, that he's always happy. Um, whatever problems he has, that we find the best and quickest solution to ensure that nothing breaks that confidence, nothing breaks that commitment to the sport. When we met him, Usain was no longer a Jamaican schoolboy tucked away in the hills of Trelawney. He was at a crossroads. Behind him lay a phenomenal junior career, ahead of him the challenge to succeed at the highest level. Bolt told us that he didn't expect to run at the 2003 World Championships, so when he didn't, he wasn't disappointed. And as for Athens 2004, well, he was going to take it one step at a time. The Olympics is really a big, big event coming up next year. Everybody's looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it, but it's not really on my mind because I have a lot of track needs before that. And I'm just hoping that I'll keep injury free and I'll, and I'll have a wonderful track here so I can go to the Olympics and do my best.